Welcome to another exciting episode of Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we are going to discuss patent application rejections and try to demystify them a little bit. First, let's do a quick review of the patent application process. As you may recall, you write your patent application and send it off to the U.S. Patent Office, or more accurately, you probably uploaded it to the Patent Office Electronic Filing System website, as filing paper applications are much less common these days. Then, you wait for a while, usually on the order of 12 to 30 months, depending on the technology area of your invention. Finally, you receive correspondence from the Patent Office. In rare cases, you're pleasantly surprised to know that your patent application is granted, and you'll receive what is called a Notice of Allowance. However, many times, you'll receive a document called an office action, and the office action has a list of rejections, the rejections being reasons why the patent application is not currently allowed. So these are the codes or sections of law for the common rejections in U.S. patent law. And rather than read you the official definition, because you can look that up, I'm going to try to explain it in basic, easy-to-understand terms. So the 101 rejection is for things that can't be patented. Some things are not eligible for patent protection. And examples include things occurring in nature, such as seawater, naturally occurring pine cones, and basic laws of nature or fundamental math concepts like the area of a circle. For mechanical patent applications, 101 rejections are not very common. However, they are quite common in the field of software inventions, where recently there has been much discussion about if ideas impl implemented in software are abstract ideas. 101 rejections are also pretty common in the chemical and biological fields for compounds, antibodies, and other substances. A 102 rejection basically means the patent office found pretty much the same thing somewhere else. It may not be photo identical, but pretty much the same thing. They may have found it in a previously published patent or patent application. They may have found it in a research paper, magazine, or other publication, or a product for sale somewhere. All of these things, patents, publications, and things for sale, are considered prior art. Prior art is legalese for stuff that existed before my invention. Now, regardless of what prior art is cited in the rejection, the 102 rejection means that the patent office considers that there is another thing out there, either physically built, or just described in a document that covers your claims. The legalese term you may hear in this situation is anticipation. You may hear that a certain previous patent application or other prior art anticipates your claim. A 103 rejection is also known as an obviousness rejection. It can sometimes be hard to wrap your head around these because they are subjective. It is hard to define precisely what is obvious and what isn't. As an example, let's say you were the first person to invent disc bicycle brakes. So prior to you coming along, no one has ever, ever put a disc brake on a bicycle, let's just say. So in doing a prior art search, the patent office finds some prior art. First, suppose the patent office finds a reference for drum bicycle brakes. And doing more searching, they find another prior art reference for a motorcycle with disc brakes. So we have our invention, a bike with disc brakes, the prior art references, which include a bike with drum brakes and a motorcycle with disc brakes. So those bicycle with drum brakes and motorcycle with disc brakes existed before our invention. So a rejection rationale provided by the patent office may look something like this. Drum brakes on a bike are known, disc brakes are a known substitute for drum brakes on other vehicles, so it would be obvious, knowing about these two prior art references, for someone of ordinary skill in this field to come up with the invention of disc bicycle brakes. 
Now, this is a contrived, simplistic example, but this is just to illustrate how references can be combined to make an obviousness rejection. A 112 rejection basically means your claims are unclear. Sometimes they call this indefiniteness, an example that, in some cases, your terms of your claims are not well defined. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have an invention and we claim a time travel apparatus comprising a vehicle, an ignition control module, a flux capacitor, and other stuff, blah, blah, blah. Now, let's say that a flux capacitor is not a well-known scientific term and it is not uh, explained or defined adequately in our written portion of our patent application, then the patent office may issue a 112 rejection in that case. So let's just recap real quick uh, what the rejections are. Okay, a 101 rejection means it can't be patented. The subject matter is ineligible to be patented. 102 basically means something just like it or very similar exists already. 103, it would be obvious to do this based on one or more other things that are out there, even though maybe they didn't find exactly what you have. And 112 means claims are not understandable. It's not clear. It's not definable. Because if claims aren't understandable, they're really not enforceable. So you really want to try to avoid running into that situation. Final tip, just to remember, rejections can be contested. So just because you get a rejection doesn't mean that you throw everything away and you're totally never ever going to get a patent to issue. Rejections can be contested and claims can often be amended to overcome the rejection. So there are techniques for getting past rejections. So hopefully this helped uh, demystify it a little bit. And thanks again for checking out this episode of Inventor's Quick Tips.